Okay, transition metal complexes have pretty much only two shapes that you'll come across. Uh, all you need to consider is that we're going to have, if you imagine, like a little square here, which is going to get wider towards you and more distant as you go away, like that. And make that a little bit taller. And we've got a shape. that looks like this which is very badly drawn <laughs> but what it's trying to illustrate is that this octahedron uh, we could have an atom here an atom here two atoms further behind and two nearer the front now if we imagine that there was actually a metal in the middle of this which is what your transition metal complexes are. And that all gets rather confusing and chemists can't draw as I've just illustrated. So what we take is we draw our metal again to illustrate this octahedral shape and we call that N plus which if you imagine the N means like anything plus which is its oxidation state. So if we draw out these lines as you can see, that's where those two would be in the same plane. However, these ones here, these four here, if we imagine them without the little guidelines, are going to look something like that. Now, the way I've drawn them at the minute looks like this square is in the same plane as that. Now, that's obviously a bit of a rubbish representation. So, what we do as if you remember from an earlier tutorial we use these wedge diagrams which if you're not familiar I'll recap by saying that these are coming towards you if you imagine that's the distance so it looks smaller and this is closer so it's fat and these ones in the distance are like that so they're going away from us so now it's a bit easier to draw we're basically getting a shape that looks a little bit more octahedral. The only other one that we're likely to come across, which you'll probably all be familiar with, is the tetrahedron, which of course is like the carbon, for example diamond, which just looks like that. And that one's dead simple. And looks like that. And I suppose I should probably put little dotted lines just to give you a little bit extra guidance there. So we've got four atoms here and if we imagine again the metal iron right bang in the middle of all of those it would look like the following that we can draw. Now, I have to find the blue again and we've got our shapes which that would be coming towards us and supposedly this one is coming towards us as well um, but for quickness I'm just going to say that it's a normal line and one of them is going in the distance but the important thing is we're still building up the sh the s exactly the same sort of shape regardless which whether you can see that it looks pretty similar to that so it's good enough for us okay so if we now just do a few little examples of real examples that might actually look like this if you imagine copper in oxidation state 2 and all of these ligands we'll just call them L because it's a lot easier to draw and if we say L equals H2O remembering that if we're actually looking at this the oxygen would be bonding to the positive ch positively charged copper like so because it's got two lone pairs which are going to bond like that. Now if we look at the tetrahedron uh, another one that would work is copper again but this time take a bigger atom like chlorine which for this time I will draw out just to give you an idea of the proportions 
that you can only fit four of these around because they're quite large even though water actually looks bigger on paper because it's all spindly chlorine is actually a very very big atom because it's a very very huge um, electron cloud so it's got seven electrons in its outer shell which is why you can only fit four of them around and of course they repel each other a lot because they're very electronegative Okay, then. later I'm going to show a few examples of the re reactions that actually get you to these, but that's just how to draw them at the minute.